So here we go in three, two, one, boom. Here we are, guys. This is it. We are now starting a podcast. Um, welcome to the awesome 4K podcast. Um, I got my buddy Joe here. How you doing? We are going to be talking about a bunch of random cool stuff um, and that I think that you guys will like. Everything is going to be off the cuff. Um, there's nothing pre-planned. I don't even know what we're going to be talking about, but it will pertain to like what's in my uh, what channel. We like. Huh? It, it, it'll pertain to what we like. Yeah, what we like that's within our... My, my channel is you know pretty much just about you know movies video games and wrestling we'll mostly keep it on those topics but you know from time to time we may you know go off topic you know and just you know talk about yeah. random stuff but all in all we're going to keep it random and real um and just talk about whatever comes to mind um about that stuff you know and uh what else oh yes and also um, as far as how often I'll be making a podcast, I don't know. It just depends on, you know, uh, when we got time for one and when we're both in the mood to, you know, do one. You know, so it might may not be for a while before we do another one. Then again, it may be the next day. Who knows? It just depends <laughs> on, <laughs> you know, just it's going to be totally random, you know. Oh, yeah. And we may make some mistakes from time to time. You guys can, uh, you know correct us in the comments below um but yeah here we are you know it's been in the in the works for a while now i've been talking about wanting to do a podcast and uh uh here we are this is it it's podcast time oh no not a podcast <laughs> yes <laughs> so uh yeah everything's off the cuff like i was saying i don't even know what the hell we're going to be talking about because you know uh nothing here is been pre-planned like i was saying so um what do you want to get into first man you want to talk about movies video games or wrestling current events old school what do you want to get into what comes to mind yeah well really man i thought we were going to talk about sex drugs and rock and roll but i guess <laughs> that, that's out of the question so yeah let's uh i don't know uh, yeah we could talk about all that but that's going off the cuff <laughs> <laughs> That's way off the cuff, yeah. you know. But uh, I don't know. Some, you know, I'm feeling. I feel like talking about movies. What do you Let's think? Do it. Or wrestling? It doesn't matter. But um, what, like I said, whatever comes to your mind, let's talk about it. I know the other day we were talking about, um, you know, horror movies, and we were also talking oh, about yeah. um, uh, good dialogue scenes, like especially like in the movie RoboCop there are so many yeah, good yeah. <laughs> dialogue scenes in that movie that uh, I, I I'm even to this day I'm very impressed with the with the film RoboCop oh yeah it's, it's one of those movies that the very one of the very few that you ever see that keeps you entertained from beginning to end oh yeah I mean the the everything the editing the dialogue, the acting, the director. I mean, it was all put together. The action, the, the oh, action, yeah. the brutality. Oh, yeah. That director, he likes that type of violence. I mean, uh, the theoretical version, you know, was kind of toned down. But if you go and watch the unrated version, there's, a, you know, the death toll in that is, like, more gruesome. Yeah. You know, but uh, that like, film like, is like, like like Peter Weller's character. Yeah, I mean, his, his his death in that movie is way more violent than right. It was. I mean, you see his arm get blown off. Yeah, and, the back of his fucking head. Yeah, you know, get and yeah. You have the, the little bit of extra dialogue from the one guy saying, "Hey, Clarence, he's still alive." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the uh, yeah the unrated version would be the way to go. I'd say to if you wanna, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. watch you the see, movie. Yeah, definitely see the unrated version. I love like that whole movie. Like, I know they 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 made a two and a three and a remake. The remake can't even hold a candle to the original. Okay, no. and part two. 
I would consider the second film a, a classic as well. It's really good. Yeah. I, I, not as good as the first one, but it's 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 got its own coolness to it that I really like. Yeah. You know, and as far as the third one goes, I absolutely yeah. hated the third one. The dialogue yeah. in the third one was trash. Um, the you know just the acting and it just seemed it didn't feel right. You know, it just no. felt off. You know, for one, they changed. You know, they changed the lead guy. It wasn't Peter Weller anymore. Right. It was Robert John Burke. Right. Well, she did it. He 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 looks like he could play RoboCop. I give him that. But the dialogue that they give him in that movie it's was shitty. yeah, it was trash. It really just pissed me off. And I really yeah. even to this day, I like, fucking hate that film. Like the no lottery. Right. I'll be loyal as a puppy. Yeah, but just shit like that. It's like you're way overdoing it. I think the writers for that film should have been fucking fired. You yeah, know? Make it, making a damn cyborg ninja. Yeah, right. and then killing off one of your main characters. Yeah, that, 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 that was the biggest bummer for me in RoboCop 3 was them killing off Nancy Allen. Yeah, it's like it wasn't even called for. It wasn't necessary. No, I mean, because, like, she was, like, besides Robocop, like, she was the only one that, like, truly that you knew from all all three of the Robocop movies. Like, she was, like, the, like, the big co-star. Right. And then to kill her off like that was just pure bullshit in the third film, you know. Didn't care for that. You know, that's why I always say RoboCop 3 is, like, one of the fucking worst films I think I've ever seen. And that's pretty bad going from two really good films to a shitty-ass movie. And then I'd I'd say the remake is, you know, much better than the fucking Part 3. Yeah. You know, but... The remake is definitely nowhere near as good as the first. No. Like you, no matter what people do, they, they, you know, they remake movies all the time and all this bullshit. You will never be able to remake RoboCop and come nowhere as close to the original. Okay, oh, and, and the no. same thing goes with Total Recall. When they remade it in what, like, two thousand and twelve or something like that. It yeah. was nowhere as good as the original. The original totally blew. The remake away, huge, you know. Yeah, but you notice that every, every every fucking remake that they have come out with, you know, like Friday the Thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, Halloween, right? Pet Cemetery, all these remakes, and it's like, well, you it, never see yet. I mean, with the exception of Halloween, you, to, in my book, right? You never see, you never see not one of them really stand up to the original. Right. Well, I, I did like Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yeah, that, that, that's the one I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't know about the newer one with Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, well, no, that's not a remake. That's a sequel, isn't it? Yeah, that? I'm talking about. I'm talking about as far as remakes. Right. Like, right. Rob right. Zombie's remake of Halloween, like the first half, was was great because it it dove uh, into the kid side of things. Know, yeah, yeah, and it showed what made Michael Myers become Michael Myers. Right, right. Yeah, I, I did very much like that film, and I'm not, like I said, I agree. I'm not big into remakes, but every once in a while, there is one that comes out, and I'm like, damn, this is pretty good, you know? Yeah, like I thought, I thought that about. I did check out the uh, new uh, Pet Cemetery. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay, so I, so I won't say much about it then if you ain't seen it. Well, I mean, you can say what you want. I don't know if I'll I mean, ever get around to seeing it. I mean, it. I'm going to say it, it, it's, it's, a lot, it's, it's way different than the original. Right, well, what about Chucky? The new Child's Play? Yeah, the new Child's Fuck Play. that movie. That movie sucks. I, I, I watched half that movie, and, and I shut it off. <laughs> that bad, huh? Yeah, because in in this in in, in the new Child's Play, it's it, he's not even a, like like Chucky, you know, being a like like the soul trapped in the doll's body. 
that was fucking cool. This one is just a fucking robot that some guy fucking, oh, not happy with his job, decides to fucking make a doll. I mean, it's not even a doll. It's like some fucking, it's a doll, but it's like a home doll thing that, that you can hook up to like a Bluetooth. You can train, like you can train it to do things and this and that. Yeah. It's like an artificial intelligence. Right. Is basically what it is. So he fucked and, it. Yeah, he fucks one up by setting it to like, to where it can fucking do like evil, like like not evil stuff, but like bad stuff. Like it, you know, it takes a liking to want to kill somebody or kill an animal or, but when I, when I started seeing all that, like I was just like, dude, this, this movie sucks. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of them do. I mean, Hollywood's running out of ideas. Yeah, you know. I I, can, I, I, I tell you the wor- I tell you what the worst movie I've ever seen in my life, dude. And I don't I don't recommend this movie to anybody unless you're really looking for a mind fuck. Yeah. It's called it's called a rubber. Never seen it. Uh, and, and it's a good thing you have it, Ken. And I don't recommend anybody ever because it is it was the stupidest movie I've ever seen in my life. You know, you think it all, rubber, oh, might, might, might be something cool about this. You watch it, it's about a fucking tire. A <laughs> rubber fucking tire that, that can just like roll around by itself and has like telekinesis powers that it can just stare at something and the tire will start shaking yeah. and it'll and the item, whatever it's looking at, will like blow up. Like you'll see, like an animal blow up, a bottle blow up, a uh, fucking person head blow up. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever watch a film like yeah. that in my life, dude. Well, that that wasn't that wasn't even the stupidest part about it. It's stu- It's like a movie inside of a movie. They have like they have like this group of fucking people standing in the desert. Like, like, like at the at the beginning, the guy shows up, tells them like, and tells all these people like, you're about to see a movie. You're you're gonna tell your you're gonna ask yourself that this movie does not make any sense. Like, why was it made? He's like, I don't know. It just it just was. Wow. And then he leaves. And then like all the people are like looking trying to figure out what they're supposed to be looking for and they're like oh something's moving over there and you see just like like a fucking the fucking tire come up out of the dirt and just start rolling around and like oh a tire (laughs) oh it's got telekinesis powers wow yeah and then halfway through the movie all the people are fucking poisoned by this guy who serves them a fucking tray of food wow what year did this film come out it was like I don't know I don't even know I just I picked it up at the at the damn pawn shop for a dollar one day just thinking oh okay I've never seen this right. you know and it's just like yeah it's, it's got to be something's got to be cool about it <laughs> and it wasn't I I watched I watched this movie up to the, like the last ten minutes of it and. <laughs> A fucking cop runs into the house, blows the fucking tire away with a shotgun, comes out with a shred of the tire, hands it to this guy and goes, tells him, oh, there, there, there's your fucking ending, pal. And walks off, and the guy's like, wait a minute, hey, this ain't right. And a fucking tricycle comes rolling out the fucking door, and, and the guy's like, hey, it's been reincarnated as a fucking, as a, <laughs> as a tricycle. What? Yeah, at that moment, I popped the fucking DVD out of my damn DVD player, walked out back, walked up to the to the woods I have back here, and I frisbeed that fucking DVD <laughs> out into the fucking woods. I, would I was too. like, I don't ever want to see this. I don't want. I don't want nobody to fucking see that. Movie. Wow, talk about yeah. There are some trash ass movies out there, man. I mean, we all we, we were talking about RoboCop three, how it was being, how that was trash shit. RoboCop three compared to Rubber would be like 
a fucking um, shit. It'd be like comparing the original RoboCop to RoboCop Three. Wow. Yeah, I it's remember very, watching. Robocop it, three to rubber. It's like compare. It'd be like, be like, it, it's like fucking RoboCop one and three. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, never watch it, Rubber. Trust me. Don't ever watch it. And everybody that's listening, I'm telling you now. If you, if you if anybody's got that movie, the best thing to do, throw that fucker away. Yeah. And speaking about um, RoboCop three again. The, the guy who played RoboCop, he was the same guy that starred in the movie Thinner, right? Yes, Robert John Burke. Yeah, Stevie King's Thinner, which I've seen at the theaters, and that was a pretty damn good film, I think. That movie, that movie tripped me out, dude. Yeah. That movie tripped me out. I, I enjoyed that film. <laughs> you killed my daughter, now I curse you, bitch. In there. <laughs> <laughs> I believe I have it on DVD, but I'd like to pick it up on Blu-ray at some point. Yeah, that's a that's a pretty good film. I like the one guy, the mafia guy. He got some good dialogue in that movie. Yeah. What about remember the part with with, with the with the chick where he put like the jar on her head, telling her it was like acid or something. Right. And then he and then he's like he fucks with her with it for a little bit then he tells her like no this is just sort of popping baking soda he pulls out another jar and goes this is the real thing <laughs> yeah that's the mafia guy right yeah yeah Yeah, he, he, he got a good I, I would say is it Joe Montanga or whatever the fuck yeah I don't I, I think Montanga that's his name or, yeah something to no, like people, that I don't know if I, if I got his name wrong you know I'm not I you know it's been a while since I've seen yeah. dinner, and it's been a while since I've seen that guy in a movie, so... Yeah, I like the part where the star is like, you know, you, you're getting off on this or something, and he's like, are you kidding me? I fucking love I mean, it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, lo I, lo I love, dude, that... <laughs> that was great. That That's was some great. good shit. Dude, he's like, what, are you kidding me? fucking love it <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that's a that's a pretty good film yeah. I'd have been like I'd be like okay buddy uh, I'm gonna get out of this car and leave now you're you're crazy yeah <laughs> he loved his job that's for damn sure mm -hmm. but yeah what do uh, they always call him that they're like uh, call him white man from town or something like like He's like, you must go now, white man from town. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And that was a yeah. Steve, Stephen King um, book that got into a movie, just like uh, yeah, a lot of Stephen King books turned into movies. You know? Basically, every Stephen King, I think every Stephen King uh, book ever pretty much became a movie like right. Cujo, Crispine, Pet Cemetery, It. Um, oh yeah, the Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. Great uh, movie. The Green Dude, Mile. What, yeah. Talking about the Shawshank Redemption, I tell you the worst, 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 worst part in that movie for me. Yeah. It's, a, it's just gut-wrenching. When, when the guy is crawling through the damn pipe full of shit. Oh, man. Yeah, I haven't I mean, seen it in a while. Like, watch, watch, watching that, knowing, you know, dude, how fucked up would that be? You're in, a, you're in like, the little confines of a pipe, man. and it's about half full of shit, and you gotta <laughs> crawl, and you gotta crawl through it for, like, a mile. Yeah, that sucks. Oh, you have, that, that's when you'd be asking yourself, is freedom really is this really going to be worth it yeah I don't know but that movie is a very well made movie yeah the Shawshank Redemption even the Green Mile which I think was like the same director um that was really well done too with Tom Hanks yeah it was, you know what's funny about the Shawshank it was the ending when um what's his name Michael Clark Duncan. No, no, I'm talking about Shawshank. Redemption. Oh, yeah. Uh, Morgan, uh, Morgan Freeman. 
you remember how like the guy escaped but, but right before he escaped he told Morgan Freeman he's like he's like there's this little town in Buxton called uh, this and this and he's like he told him like you know if you ever get out go visit this place and there's a special place with a rock and he, he told him all that and then you know escaped that night and if you notice Morgan Freeman didn't get out of didn't get out till like several years later yeah and it's funny how after several years you would remember like the name of the town and where this because after several years you'd be like what the fuck was named that town again what was the name of that town again or like he even wrote something in a letter like telling them where he was gonna be at and he's like you remember the name he's like and he he thought about it he's like oh yeah I know now that's where I'm going <laughs> you know they they did they did a spoof of that. Um, they did a spoof of that on Family Guy. Oh, did they? Yeah, and the spoof was they had um, uh, Cleveland playing Morgan Freeman's role, and they had uh, Peter playing uh, what's his name's role. Um. And, yeah, I don't remember. No, no. I don't remember. But, but at the end, like, Cleveland remem- remembered where, like, he, the place he went to get the money and stuff. And he's, like, telling him about, you remember where, you know, where I'm going to be at. You know the name. He's like, ah, damn, I done forgot. <laughs> and Peter's, it shows, like, a year later, Peter's sitting at the town waiting for that. Damn, he really must have took my money and ran. I was like, yeah, okay, that's a funny, pretty funny ending. <laughs> yeah, that's a good show, by the way, Family Guy. Yeah. Same thing with Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> yeah. And South Park. That's the one show. i tell you what, out of and all those shows, though, man, the one show I loved more than any of them was Beavis and Butthead. Yeah, me too. And also The Simpsons is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Those were some really good shows, man. Back in the day. South Park. Park. Oh, yeah. South Park. All of those. It's funny, a lot of those shows we talk about, they've been been around for... Long time. Yeah, because I remember watching those shows when we were teenagers. Well, I think um, The Simpsons came out in, like, late 19... Yeah, either 90 or 89. Okay. Yeah, they started at 89. I think they started at 89. Right when, at the... Uh, the t- making a little appearances on Tracy Ullman's show. Yeah, I mean, right at the tail end of 89, I think, is when things got started with The Simpsons. And then 90, they came out. And then, uh, you know, uh, the early 90s, we had, you know, Beavis and Butthead. Um... We have Beavis and Butthead to America, which to me is one of the greatest movies ever. Oh yeah, that is a fantastic animated movie. I yeah. have that on DVD, and I love that film. Yes, I I absolutely love it too, bro. Yeah, I even have the uh, the volumes. There's three or four, like four different volumes of uh, the Beavis and Butthead series. You know. The Mike Judge collection, or something like that, and uh, from time to time, I like to go back and you know uh, watch them all and relive the old oh, school yeah. shit. Just pretty cool. Good I times. I like watching Beavis and Butthead do America because there was a. Uh, it, it had that movie had a lot of good dialogue. Like oh yeah, the part where <laughs> the part where they where they meet the the chick that's being voiced by Demi Moore, and she's like. Who sent you? FBI, CIA, and they're telling her like, oh, he's like he's like uh, this drunk dude. He said he was gonna pay us to do you. <laughs> he's like, she's like, she's like, how much is he paying you? And he's like, ten, he's like ten grand. Oh, what a cheap ass. And he's like, I'll double it. I'll pay you twenty if you go back there and do him. And they're like, <laughs> 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 and he's like, you want to do a guy? <laughs> No way. And Beavis is like, I don't know, Butthead, it is a lot of money. <laughs> what if we close our eyes and put you need a chick and you just get backhand like, ah! 
<laughs> that's fucking great. Yeah. <laughs> like that that watching that part, I can watch that part over and over again and it, and still laugh every time I watch that part. Yeah. I mean, I think that film came out in like what 96, 97, something like that. Yeah, something like that. It was it was a very good film, you know. Back then, there were some really good films that came out in '96. You yeah, know, oh, yeah, a lot, yeah, like Twister. Yeah, Twister came out that year. The Nutty Professor came out that mm-hmm. year. Um, yeah, I remember that year being yeah, pretty good. Even uh, I think a Racer with Arnold uh, Schwarzenegger. Yeah. And uh, Daylight I mean, with uh, Stallone. Didn't mean, you, didn't mean you go see Racer at the theater. We might have. I mean, also, uh, Daylight with uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, great, great movie, by the way. Yeah, that was pretty movie. cool. I, I have I have that movie in my collection. Yeah, I think I have it on DVD. I'm not sure, but I know I need to get it on Blu-ray. Yeah. Dude, there's a part in Daylight I thought was it, it, the saddest part in Daylight. The one kid dying from getting hit in the chest with the pole and, he, and he's like telling all the people around him like just tell my father tell my father I was helping people down here okay and they're and, and, and the one old man so I'm like it's alright man yeah I, I, we'll tell him I'll make sure I'll tell him you're you know you're you're a real hero and and the kid's last words is like he's like he won't he won't believe you and he just fucking dies yeah yeah I was like, damn, that's fucking sad, dude. Yeah, I remember that. That's a pretty good movie. That that was sad in the part where they had to, Stallone had to leave the one guy because the guy's, you know, wound up breaking his neck and couldn't move. Yeah, a lot of the people just died in that film. Yeah. I tell you, the one death that surprised me was uh, Viggo Mortensen. Oh yeah, well he, yeah, he got all that shit dropped on him. Yeah, I'm talking about like you know they made that they think like oh he's the, he's the ultimate you know climber seeker and like, yeah he's climbing and stuff and then it's like he's in the like he's like oh I'm gonna go through here and get up this blah 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 and it's just like the next thing you know he's like he's crushed dead like you know like <laughs> wow yeah like okay. a house of cards man just all came down on you. Yeah, that's what he says to him too. He's like, this thing's gonna come down like a house of cards. And if it does, they're gonna be picking you up for a month. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he did try to, you know, get out, but yeah, it was uh, too funny, much. Funny, funny thing about that movie is uh, uh, his his son played with him in that movie. Oh yeah, his son passed away uh, back in like 2012. Yeah. His son played in also Rocky Five. Yeah. His real I, son. I, I played, <laughs> you know what? I'm sorry, no no disrespect, but they could have gave that kid some better dialogue in the, in the Rocky fight scene. Yeah, yeah. The part uh, where he comes, he comes running out and yelling at Sloan's like, hey, hey, Dad, knock that bum out. He took my room. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I was like, what the <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was though a pretty decent movie, Rocky Five. Yeah, it was. You, you know the uh, the one guy uh, who was was Rocky's friend at for first that he was helped training, then he turns on him. Yeah, t- uh, Tommy Morrison. Yeah, now didn't he end up dying too in real life, Tommy Morrison? Yeah, he he died about I think he died like five years ago or so. Yeah, and like didn't he end up with like. AIDS or some shit like that? I think, ah, yeah, I think he, they, that's what, that's what ended his boxing uh, career, because they, yeah. they, they said that he, he, um, he was HIV positive. Yeah, I remember, like, before he died, I was seeing some pictures, and he looked, like, really old, but he wasn't that old. He was only, like, 40, 41, 42, or something like that. Yeah. Well, well, you know what, though? The guy the guy was also a partier. They were talking about how he was always in the drinking and drugs, and when you do that shit for years, that shit will make you look, make you look way older than what you oh, are. Oh, yeah, that will. You will burn the candle at both ends doing it that yeah. way. 
Yeah, I think he was somewhere in his 40s, I believe, and uh, yeah, he looked kind of bad, and I was like, damn, dude, you look way different. Yeah. You know, but yeah, that's unfortunate. But all in all, I, you know, I think Rocky Five was a pretty good film. Yeah, it was, you know what, it's fun. It's weird how they, they, they went with Rocky Five, and then they did Rocky Balboa years later, and it's oh, like yeah. they just... They wrote off Adrian, wrote off this person, wrote off that person. Right. It's like, now you got the three movies. Yeah. Every time they do a movie, it's like somebody's got to die, you know? Yeah. You know? You, 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 know, you notice they started doing that. In Rocky like, Three. Like, like Rocky Three, where right. they killed off Burgess Meredith. In, right. In, in Three. Then in Four, they killed off, you know, uh, Carl Weathers. Right. And in Five, they were... Stallone said that they were going to kill his character off, but they didn't want to, you know, yeah, leave, he, leave it on a bad he, note. He, he, he was supposed to die in the original. He was supposed to die in the fight with Tommy. Right. But but, he, but that I mean, got, that yeah, got I changed. Do, I do see that, that. I mean, imagine if they would they would have did that. I mean, like, okay, why why are you just having? I mean, what's Where's it go from here, though? If you if you kill off Rocky, right? And then in Rocky Six, Balboa, his wife is dead, right? Yep. And then in the uh, spinoff movie, uh, Creed, yeah, it's, Creed, um, Polly, Polly, but dead. I'm like, wow, like what the fuck, dude? Like he just went right right off everybody, you know? It's like, damn. <laughs> you know it's. Kind of messed up, man. But uh, I love the original Rocky film. I thought that movie was so yeah. good. It's I, a fantastic I, I, I movie. Like, I, I like how Stallone went from just like, like when you watch him in the first Rocky, how he was kind of just like struggling. He was just doing odd jobs and whatever, being a well, he's being a strong arm. Yeah, for and, and but you know he's also trying his luck at boxing. And then right. he winds up just getting the the lucky break of actually being picked to uh, fight Carl Weathers. Right. And then you know, you know, yeah, that movie was so good. I haven't seen it in a while, but I, I definitely want to watch it again. Yeah. And it was the whole thing that started his this whole thing with Adrian and Polly and right. And that film was shot, I think, from what he was saying, something like thirty days. Yeah. You know, and it, it, you, know, you ever notice, like in Rot, in the first Rocky, Talia Cher, who plays Adrian, like her character in the first Rocky, she was like, like this big shy type girl wearing these right. ugly glasses and stuff, and then by like Rocky three rolls around, and she's just a you know a normal everyday woman. Right. Well, people change over time. I know, but I'm saying I thought that was cool. It's like in the first Rocky, she's you know shy and this and that, not around a lot of people, and you know she hooks up with Rocky and they have a kid and they get famous. And by Rocky three, you see her like all decked out, you know, sit, you know, with, along with Rocky, and it's like. Oh, wow, they really came up since the first Rocky. Yeah, well, not just that. If you know, noticed like Rocky one and two, Stallone wasn't that ripped, and in part three, he was fucking ripped. You know, on up. Oh yeah. His muscle tone. He it wasn't. It, it wasn't that like great. I want to say in the first two films, there wasn't really nothing. But in no, three, well, three and four, dude. His ass was uh, ripped. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you notice in 3, too, I mean, he looked nothing like he looked in, like, 1 and 2. Right. Well, like, yeah, he changed his whole body, you know? Yeah. I mean, they even tried to make up for it by having Pauly say a line at the beginning of 3. He's like, oh, you made some money. You got your face all fixed up nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really good movies. I love all the Rocky films. Uh, the, even the Creed films are really good. I've seen the first one. I haven't seen the second Creed movie yet, but I will. You know, in the future for sure. Oh yeah. 
Um, and then I liked how they brought back um, what's his name, uh, Dolph Dolph, Lund Dolph Lundgren. Yeah, I thought that was a great uh, writing there on Stallone's part to bring Dolph Lundgren back. You yeah. Know. And they even brought um, Bridget Nelson back. Yeah, but she, I mean, it, she only had. They didn't, she wasn't even in the movie much. Like she had a I think she she had like two scenes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's cool she, to see her back. She used to be she, married to Stallone in real life. Yeah. You know, in the eighties. Yeah, I tell you what, back back in the day, man, I, I thought Bridget Nelson was cute as hell. Yeah, I mean, she was she was pretty cute in Cobra, which is a I think a kick ass movie. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like the car driving scene uh, in that film don't even, don't even get me started on Cobra bro uh, but, but some, there's some Cobra bro well, so, <laughs> you know like how we were saying like in Robocop we there's some good dialogue scenes there's some fucking yeah, good dialogue yeah, scenes yeah. in Cobra too man you know like that end scene where uh, what's his name the main bad guy yeah, Brian, uh, what, uh, Brian Thompson yeah. yeah and he's telling him he's telling him like uh, I want your eyes <laughs> yeah I want them I want them He's like, you want to go to hell? Oh, yeah. What, you want to hell with me, <laughs> Yeah. We kill the weak so the strong survive. You yeah. know? Dude, I Fucking you crazy what, motherfucker, I, you know? Look, Brian Thompson's character, they're like, I, I, could, I, I don't think I could see anybody else play that that character. On that like level. Brian oh, yeah, he, he really did bring it. Um which uh yeah was pretty cool you know he played an ultimate badass motherfucker yeah. in that film man he also had a small part in terminator um he had a cool scene where he's like hey something wrong with yeah, this picture yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. when arnold's walking up day. right nothing clean right nothing clean right right <laughs> I, I think this guy's uh something short of a six pack or something like that yeah. and it's like he's you like your what? clothes Bro, give them Brian, to me Brian, Brian Thompson he was also in uh, Joe Dirt yeah yeah he's I, Buffalo Bob you don't see much of uh, him anymore but he was in some cool movies he was in yeah. the second Mortal Kombat film he played Shao Kahn uh, he was in uh, Van Damme film Lionheart yeah um, yeah I think uh Speaking of uh, Cobra, there was one bit of dialogue I thought was hilarious during the car chase where Stallone's chasing those guys. Yeah. And he pulls up alongside, and the one bad guy is going like... Uh, <laughs> the driver. <laughs> yeah, he's going like, he's crazy. He's crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, wait a minute, you guys are the ones all want to all act crazy and psychopaths. That's shit. right. Well, Stallone was just taking it to their level. Yeah, but, but I'm saying to, for them to be crazy psychopaths themselves and to and to admit like, oh shit, this guy's crazy. Yeah. He's crazy. He's like, yeah. like yeah, they, you y'all done fucked with the wrong motherfucker. Yeah, you fucked with the wrong bull and you brought it out in him. You know, yeah, that was a really cool movie, Cobra. I like that one. Yeah. One of my favorite Stallone movies of all time. Over the top. Was over the top yeah yeah there's the, the that's top. another film that you know i noticed people a lot of people didn't like i liked it I, and i thought it had some good dialogue well, in that yeah <clears throat> well the dialogue and stuff wasn't too bad a lot a lot of the people didn't like the movie because of uh the kid of uh of david mendenhall who just i mean i yeah uh, you go back and you watch that yeah he did act like a fucking brat like <laughs> he was crying all the time and he was like well I mean that was his character that was what was you know written yeah. for his character and I want to add that um, the kid uh, that played his son um, he was also he was one of the voices in uh, the 80's Transformers movie I believe which is pretty yeah. cool you know I haven't seen him do much um, work after that movie. I don't think he really did too much. I seen I seen a few. I seen a uh, well. I, I didn't see one movie that came out after Over the Top was uh was uh I might, it was called Going Bananas. Yeah. 
It had Dom DeLuise and uh, what's his name, uh, Jimmy Walker. Yeah. And um, they were like in Africa, and like they they come across this this monkey who can talk and stuff, and a bunch of bullshit. And it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, other than those reason. films, I didn't see him in too many films. Afterwards, no. that's weird, he, you know. He did play in one back when he was a little kid. Ah, fuck! What was the name of that movie again? It was like it was an outer space film. Yeah, I'm not sure. And some invaders or some, but yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Yeah, it, it, top, it, like like the arm rustling, like the whole music yeah, right. with the arm, with the showing all the arm rustling going on. Yeah. Was like that was badass. And some of those motherfuckers were built like tanks, yeah. man. I'm telling, like Bull Hurley was fucking big, dude. <laughs> that that dude back in the day, that was that would be one guy I would never would would mess with. Hell I mean, no. That guy, him, him and over the top, he, he was scary. Yeah, I mean, uh, not a, you know, not only that, you know, you got fucking Terry Funk was in the movie, you know. Yeah. He had a great little scene with Stallone. Mr. He had Robert, he had Robert Loja in the movie. Right, right, mm -hmm. who's a great actor, who was in, uh, I believe, uh, Scarface, which is a classic yeah. Al Pacino film. Yeah. You know? I like, I like that part, Scarface. Scar face when they're asking him about his scars, like where'd you get that from me? <laughs> He's like, how do you get something like this from me? Yeah, <laughs> dumb fucks. Yeah, that was a good movie. Um, that was funny. That was funny. He's just like looking at him, like, what the fuck are you talking about, man? Yeah, <laughs> fucking cops, man. Yeah. But yeah, uh, over the top had some good dialogue scenes. Had some cool arm wrestling, you know. See, I like the one where they're um, him and his son are like at the. I want to say it's a bar or maybe a restaurant or you know both or whatever. But yeah, when he talks about his bar with uh, with Smasher. Yeah, when Smasher comes up to him and says, "Are you Hawk?" Uh, and he's, I'm Smasher. And he's like, "Nice name." Yeah. <laughs> he's like. Uh, I hear you're pretty good or something like that. And he's like, uh, you shouldn't believe everything. And he's like, well, I don't. And he's like, uh, I don't I, believe any of it. Yeah, I, I got a thousand bucks says I could take I you right now. Tear your arm off. Yeah. You want it? <laughs> yeah. You want it? <laughs> yeah, he just looks back and goes, sure. Yeah. <laughs> he's, like, he's like, yeah, well, well I'm going to get the table set up. I'm going to show this guy stuff. Yeah, I love the hey, part where they were... He, I love the part where he was getting his fucking face slapped and he was getting hyped up yeah. and you could see you could look at Stallone as he's walking in you could see him hyping himself up big time for it like oh fuck dude I'm yeah. in trouble <laughs> and then that's when uh, Bull Hurley's uh, first appearance uh, comes into yeah. play he grabs, grabs the kid's hand he's like he's like what are you doing with that guy he's like he's my father he's like too bad yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, good, good, good movie. I would say, man, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I need, to, I need to watch yeah, that I, again. Like, I, I love, I love the Indian arm wrestling bit with Stallone and Paul Hurley, where you, where Stallone, where Paul Hurley's just talking so much shit to him, like, yeah, ducking me for years. Uh, Get in here, here. <laughs> yeah, come on, <laughs> yeah. Then he socks Stallone in the nose. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you know, you know, it's hurt hawks. Yeah. Now, if that would have happened in real life, the, he probably would have uh, he eliminated. Would have disqualified. Yeah, but since it's the movies, of course they gotta overdo it, you know. But yeah, yeah. It, it, like, look, look, what, look what happened when he fought with Stallone, arm wrestled the one guy that was like right before the last person he arm wrestled before Bull Hurley. And like he, well, like when they they did the match, like he. Got him down quickly, and the guy was like, "Shut up, shut up, man! I wasn't ready." Yeah. I'm yeah. I, wasn't ready, I'm I remember that. Yeah, that was pretty good. He slammed his arm down real fast, and the one guy's like, "Hey, wait a minute! I wasn't ready." <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yeah, you know was, what? They, 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 they did something like that back in 2009 in, in, in the WWE with uh, Santino Morella. Oh, really? They had him do something like that in the, in the 2009 Royal Rumble match. He came, he came out, he came running to the ring. He's acting all like, yeah, here we go. And he runs, gets in the ring, stands up, and gets clotheslined over, backwards over the ropes to the floor, eliminated. <laughs> Isn't and it? He, yeah, he, he just, he, and he jumps, he jumps up. Like, like, giving that same thing, like, he's like, I wasn't ready! I wasn't ready! No, I wasn't ready! No! No! <laughs> wow. Isn't it Santina now, Marella? Uh, I don't know. Fuck him. I, I don't know either. Never did care for the motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, so, I know, uh... You know I mean, I mean I, you know what? I, I, I didn't, I mean, I know he was all more, more cop for comedy and shit, but... Yeah. I know, uh, I know fucking Tommy over there at Wrestling Rampage hates that motherfucker. And you know what, you know what, I, 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 I see why. I see why he fucking... Yeah, I, n- I never yeah, liked... Yeah, t- I mean, it's like, you, you look at Santino Morello, you go back and you watch... I mean, even if you don't know about the backstage shit, you don't know about, you know, Corn, Jim Cornette slapping the shit out of him for being a stupid ass. Right. But you, you just go back and you watch his whole, like, career in WWE. And just like, God, you just wish the fucker would just go away. <laughs> yeah, I never followed him, so. Like, it's like, how, how does this guy even still got a fucking job? Yeah, that's that's the like, number one question uh, right there. Yeah, it's like, it's not, not, not just that, but like, how did he ever get, like, high up on the card, like, they were putting the Intercontinental Championships on him, United States Championships, like, it's like, wow, so, you know, there's all these other great wrestlers, you can put those belts on that would, that would proudly represent those belts, but you're gonna put it on fucking Santino Morella. Yeah, it's a fucking joke, dude, and a disgrace yeah. to the wrestling yeah. business, I think. Just certain things are just stupid when it comes to wrestling. Yeah. I, mean, I, I, mean, no, I mean, I don't mind a wrestler acting goofy and shit, but as long as you got the wrestling ability to back it up. Yeah, like, um, what's his face did at, with uh, Roddy Piper at WrestleMania 3, I think. Uh, by Adrian Adonis? Yeah, I mean, I was cool with that guy. I didn't, you know, yeah. he, he could wrestle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but some of these, like, people nowadays are just like, holy shit, man. Like, fucking Sonny Kiss. And Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy and the guy who fucking grabs people's dicks and shit. Or no, or he has them grab his dick or whatever. I don't know. I don't watch his shit. Yeah, I, you, you know, know when, that's when like, they, I mean, all I got to hear is somebody saying, oh, he's touching a guy's dick or a guy's touching his dick. Like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not interested in watching that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not interested in watching borderline porno, okay, you stupid fucks. You know, to me, that, that's the, the it, disgrace it, it, to the wrestling not, business. Like, yeah, I would have never thought... I can honestly say I fucking hate wrestling now. Well, yeah, nowadays it's pure trash. I would have never thought back in the 90s, early 2000s, or even like 2010, you know? But just now the way wrestling is, like... Yeah, it's... uh, And that's for every... Pretty much every wrestling company um, is, like, trash. I want to say stuff I mean, like I, I started. I started liking in NWA Power. Thought that show was going to do fucking great. Well, it actually it, it did do great, and that's the one show yeah, that I, I do like. like. But, but, yeah, but then they they fucking changed the intro. Went with a different song. They're bringing in fucking worthless talent. It's well, like, yeah, some of the talent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's with any company. AEW has good talent, but they also have a lot of shitty talent. You know, yeah. NWA well, I, Power. I'm, I'm sorry. You know what? I know a lot of people shit on AEW, and I I see why. Like I, yeah. I watch a couple segments here and there. I mean, the only thing is, I mean, they they got good talent. 
I mean, they're, they're getting talent coming in right now. I mean, they got right. fucking FDR, FDR coming in. Fucking, they, you know, they got Brody Lee. They got John Moxley. They got Jericho. Right. I mean, they got... But, but the, then, then, you know, then, then they got the... the fu- other, yeah, then they got the other side of things like Sonny Kiss and the asshole who rubs baby oil all over his body. You yeah, know. I don't, like I said, like Orange Cat. Right. I mean, the jokes. Right, and they're that kind of... jokes. Yeah, they're like fucking circus fucking actors or some shit. Yeah. You know? And the one thing I don't like about AEW is the main guy had banned um, Linda Hogan from ever coming to her, any of their events which I think is retarded because she probably doesn't even know about this company because obviously she's not a fan of wrestling just because she was married to Hulk Hogan at one time. She gets banned yeah. because she she made a statement you know, about black people and racism and all that shit that's going on with yeah. the riots and stuff. That's not okay with them, but they can have a convicted... Uh, fucking rapist which is Mike Tyson work for them but that's okay though he's a convicted rapist now I personally don't believe that Mike Tyson ever raped anybody um, but he is a convicted rapist so it's okay for AEW to have him in the fucking company but if she says something on Twitter she's banned to me that's fucking bullshit and wrong you know I think that's so fucked up and you know she should bring that point up too you know, I'm sure with her, she probably looked at that like, wow, not even yeah. worth my fucking she, time. She probably, if I was her, I, I would have been like, um, and who are you? <laughs> you know, because she probably yeah, doesn't exactly. even know who the fuck. Like, uh, so, so you're banning me, and I don't, I, I don't, even know, I don't even know who the fuck you are. Dude. Exactly, she probably doesn't Come even know who the bro. fuck they are. And she's getting banned. She probably would never would have went to any of their events, anyways. So it's so fucking pointless to just keep, you know, adding fire to things that have been going on. You know, the, you know, it's it's just stupid. And it was pointless. You know, so didn't care for that one bit. You know, but but I do like some of the wrestlers in AEW. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously they got talent there. Um, but when I first, when we first found out about AEW and them all coming in and stuff, I wasn't sure what to think. I was thinking, the, you know, as time went on, I was thinking before they did any matches, I was thinking, man, this is going to be like, I was hoping it was going to be like some borderline like ECW shit, where it's going to be like hardcore wrestling uh, and stuff. I didn't think it was, was going to be that big, but... Right. This I mean, is what I was like thinking. I thought, I thought, though, they would finally give, they would, they would do a show that would finally get the wrestling fans interested in wrestling again. Right. I just you know, thought I mean, it's... You got WWE is just becoming a total fucking shit show. Right. The and ratings push, are push shit. The, push, pushing the wrong people, bringing back that sorry stack of fucking shit. Brock Lesnar, time after time, giving him the belt, letting him sit home for three, four fucking months in a row. Right. Yeah, that that right there, I, I, I got to a point with WWE, I was like, I cannot watch this fucking bullshit anymore. Yeah, they give him... I cannot him- watch this fucking sack of fucking shit, and that's what he is. Brock hey, Lesnar hey, right. is a fucking sack of fucking shit. Yeah, they push him like, and I've said this before in videos, like he's some sort of demigod. They glorify him on these, you know, the main four, you know, DVD covers. And I'm like, dude, he only yeah, he right. only shows up. Right. He comes out, oh, suplex, suplex, F5, collect my million dollars. Right, going home exactly. He only does three-minute matches or less. It's rare that you'll see him actually do... A longer match than three minutes. It's rare, yeah. you know. And, I mean, and when he does come out, he gets paid mega bucks to fucking wrestle. I'm just like, dude, why do you even have this fucker on your roster when you actually got talent that will wrestle um, that you're not yeah. giving the push? You know, it's it's amazing. I, I, I don't know. It's amazing I mean, to I, me. I, I see. I mean, 
you go back and look now. Brock Lesnar from like what was it, two thousand? He came back in what two thousand fourteen or some bullshit. Right. And it's like from two thousand fourteen to now, it's like oh, put the title on him. Let him go sit home for months. Right. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh, people, we gotta we gotta put it on 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 somebody that so they'll get people interested in Raw for a while. Right. And we'll give it right back to Brock Lesnar. And, 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 and this is not just about Brock Lesnar. This would go for any wrestler. If any wrestler, yeah. you know, were to do shit like this, even if, I would call him out on it and say, dude, you only wrestle once in a while and you're glorified like some ultimate badass when you can't do shit. Now, yeah. some, some wrestlers have earned that privilege, like The Undertaker. He he doesn't, you know, he, does, he comes out once a year for WrestleManias, yeah. and I'm fine with that. But John Cena, right? Well, John Cena, he's been fuck man. He's been wrestling for many years, and now he's yeah. What, I know, but I'm saying, like, you know, he, he doesn't really wrestle much anymore. He well, comes no, in. he can't. I mean, come on, these guys are now in their forties and shit. You can't. You can only put that body through so much abuse. Um, yeah. uh, John Cena, he's probably in a lot of pain. You know. Yeah. Perhaps, probably yeah. taking yeah. a lot of he ice baths and shit. Now after he lost, after he lost Nikki Bella. Well, did he? <laughs> man, he lost her a long time ago, I think. Right? Yeah. You know what? Uh, but good riddance. I mean, she she sounds like you know, like like uh, I don't know. Never was a fan of the Bella twins, to be honest with you. She sounds like a bitch. I, I mean, I don't I don't really give a shit about Nikki Bella, but. I always, I always thought Brie Bella was just pretty damn cute. I mean, you know, I like yeah, I, I, could, never, I could put up, I could put up with her way more than I could ever put up with Nikki. Bella. I mean, they're good-looking girls and all, but I never really got into their wrestling that much. And I believe they, like, what been retired since two thousand eighteen, something yeah. like that, with the first women's yeah, Royal Rumble. Because Brie is 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 their both having kids now. Right. And they got that show, The Bella Twins or some shit like that. Yeah. I've well, seen cl- yeah. I've seen clips of it on YouTube and shit. And I'm just like, get the fuck out of here. You know? Yeah, I, I just... Yeah. Those two girls churn me off with their bullshit. So I don't really know a whole lot about them, but I know a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Fucking bullshit, man. Yeah, wrestling's gone to shit, dude. I know what... I know it's, it's you know what the only I think the only reason the Bellas became s- such big names is because look at what look what happened Marie married Daniel Bryan and Nikki was dating John Cena right. and their fucking mo- their fucking mom is married to fucking John Laurinaitis. Oh okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's like uh, wow. So they all they all just married. You know, it's, you know, it's they they married and went out with like top people that was like, oh, you know, hey, how about mom's probably like telling John like, oh, if, 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 let, let my let my daughters have this moment, please. <laughs> yeah. Baby, you think for you? Yeah, don't give a fuck about them. Never did. So, no, nope. fuck them. You know, they're just fucking eye candy to me. Yeah, that's about in it. Fact, in fact, they're going. They were. You know, it's funny. You know, because of this shit going on in the world. You know, we didn't, they didn't have the Hall of Fame, and the fucking Bellas were supposed to go into the Hall of Fame. Yeah, this I, year. I think it got postponed to later or something yeah. like that. I believe but, they shouldn't be in the fucking Hall of Fame. You know that? Yeah. I mean, there's other women wrestlers who are way better that should be in the fucking Hall of Fame before them. Yeah. You know, like like Molly Holly and shit, man. Yeah. You know, I just, I don't get the Hall of Fame sometimes because they'll put in people that you were like, nah, man, they, they really shouldn't be there now or, it, you know what I mean? There's yeah. other people that should be there. I mean, I don't know. I, I what just... What gets me is, is, is they bring Molly Holly back for the Women's Royal Rumble match Two years in a row, and when when you see her, see her, you know, like like not this past Royal Rumble, but last year's Royal Rumble, she 
come out and she was the only she was the only older woman wrestler that was not in the Hall of Fame at the time. Yeah. And, and when I saw her come back, I'm thinking, oh, wait a minute, you know, she's the only one out of all of them that ain't in the Hall of Fame yet. Maybe this is her fucking year finally. Right. And, it, and it's like, uh, what, what they did that? That was the year they announced Ivory was going, in, think was going in the Hall of Fame. Right. Which I was like, I think, okay, you know what? I can understand Ivory because Ivory was in the business was in the business longer than Molly Holly. I mean, I, I, I get it. I, I you know, look at it now. Look at the, you know the, the chain. You know, uh, the fact that. I think Ivory came into the WWF round 99 and then yeah, Molly didn't come in until like 2000 so I was thinking okay they'll put Ivory in this year and then th- this year I saw her come back again you know and I'm thinking okay maybe, finally you know there's no, there's nobody else I mean there's nobody else that, that's been there before her that that's that's not in the Hall of Fame, so it's like they, they it's like they gotta pick her, you know. It's 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 her it's her fucking turn. And then they know, yeah. oh, we're put, we're putting the fellas in like <laughs> you motherfuckers. Yeah, Fuck I, don't, I don't keep up with it too much to be honest with you because I it, like ninety percent of WWE this day these days are is trash. I don't even know what the fuck's yep. going on. I don't know the storylines. I don't know a lot of the newer wrestlers. I, you know, just snippets of things I hear or see, you know, on YouTube and whatnot. And the, and the guys from the YWC, you know, will mention things. But, you know. And, and, you know, like, I know they have Raw now. And I know they got the belt off of Lesnar. And they got it on Drew McIntyre. But I, can, I cannot bring myself to watch... The, the wrestling the way they have it now with the fucking no audience it's like it yeah. just looks fucking stupid yeah it just it does feel without the audience you know it's like you're you're making yeah. a perfect you know meal or something and you're missing a key ingredient yeah you that's know that's the only good thing the only good thing that AEW is doing you know they're they have their their, their talent right. as as like some like a surround the ring so they can you know give the cheers and the booze and make it right. sound like you know there's an audience they can react and they have somebody out there to react when right. you just got two people in the ring doing a bunch of moves and you're not hearing no you're just right. hearing cricket 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 <laughs> right cricket. yeah it's like wow this is this is fucking dumb yeah I mean it's going to be and, interesting. And, and, but and since, since this shit, I have not watched not one. I do, I do not have not a clue what is going on besides me, like just on like some some other podcast shit. Me either. And it's going to be interesting when I eventually pick up uh, this year's WrestleMania because there was no, no audience for that no, either. No, no damn audience. <laughs> I know. The only match that I'm honestly looking forward to watching is the. Uh, one with the Undertaker, you know. The Boneyard match. Yeah, the Boneyard match. That's the only one that seems cool, and from what I heard, yeah. got good reviews. I thought, man, that's a cool idea to have a I Boneyard tell you, match. Yeah, I tell you what's fucking hilarious about about that is that the Undertaker and AJ is that they had Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson in that, and then the very next like. Couple, like a week or two later they get fucking released yeah. like two guys that worked in the main event at Wrestlemania it's like oh we're releasing them two weeks later <laughs> yeah it's so, like why and you, you know this they, they released all that talent and, and it's funny that fucking Brock Lesnar's name was not on that list <laughs> it should be that should be number that, one that, that, sh- that should have been the first motherfucker gone <laughs> should be but you know Vince McMahon seems to love that guy for some reason yeah Play favoritism big time for Brock you know what Lesnar. I, I know I know why Vince gives in the Brock Lesnar because uh, 
I heard on a po- somebody's podcast that back in the day, Vince was the biggest fucking Sable fan. Like, whenever Sable, like, wrestled, they said that Vince would just, like, he would never watch anybody else's matches, but whenever Sable was on TV, he would be standing there with his eyes just fucking glued to the mon- to the monitor. Oh, really? And they were saying something about, like, she walked by one day with some, like, white spandex on or something, and Vince and, and, and all the fucking other jackasses, I think, like, Gerald Briscoe and Pat Patterson were all, like, cracking, like, jokes. They thought it was, like, that was, that's, like, the perfect image right there it was, like, sable and spandex. Yeah. And it's funny that Brock Lesnar is married to fucking Sable. Oh, yeah, maybe he's loaning her out from time to time. <laughs> yeah, he's like, hey, 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 Rena, go over there and see Vince. I, I need, I need about another, I need another five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And, and I only want to work, I only want to work two times this year. Yeah, and it's, and it's got to be less than three minutes per match. Yeah. Make, make sure make sure you wear that outfit that Vince likes so much. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's got it's got to be something. There's got to be a reason why Vince has such a hard on for this fucking clown. You know. Yeah. I just don't get it, and that goes for any wrestler. If I ever see a wrestler only doing three minute matches for years, hey, and yeah. you're glorifying them on these DVD covers, I don't care who yeah. it is. I'd be like, fuck I this. Know. I don't care if it, it was. Be like, it'd, be, hey, it'd, be, it'd be like them bringing back Stone Cold Steve Austin. Right. If they did that, would, they would just. All, all, all you're having them do is run out there, throw some fist, throw a kick, and give and give the person a stunner. One, two, three, then fucking. You're right. Have, now, if yeah. if Stone Cold would have did that, the same thing that Brock Lesnar's doing now and done for years, it, it would have destroyed joke. his fucking image, his career. Yeah. Like, his whole image would be so, like, people like, ah, fuck Stone Cold, he's a three-minute wrestler, you know? Fuck that yeah. guy, you know? It's a good thing that yeah. Stone Cold got out, you know, while the getting was good. Yeah. You know? It's like, it's like you know, even like Bret Hart. You know, Bret Hart, like, the guy could not like, it his condition that he was in he couldn't even have a match like he couldn't even take a bump or if you notice when Bret Hart's match with Vince McMahon at the one Wrestlemania and he even had a match with The Miz like like all it was was Bret beating the shit out of Vince yeah and even when he fought The Miz like somebody had to run out and attack The Miz and Bret just basically came out and put him in the sharpshooter and became the United States champion. Right. Well, at, you know, like, at that time, like, you like know. You're, you're putting a fucking belt on a guy that can't even have a match. Yeah, well, that's understandable because, you know, after... Yes, Brett Hart, he's a fucking legend. I get it, but... Well, he's a legend, but not just that. After what happened to him, you know, during uh, yeah. late 90s. Um, so, you know, he couldn't really do much after that. But, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but as far as his wrestling goes in the, you know, 80s and 90s, he was great. He's a hitman. I mean, well, he had, he had great matches. Is, if you ever want to see, see something really funny, go back and watch WrestleMania 12 when Bret Hart was coming out for his match. There was a fan that held up the sign saying Brett the shit man art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I mean, you see, as Brett's coming out, he passes by the fan, and you just see the fan holding up the sign saying Brett the shit man art. But I wonder how the WWF allowed somebody, that person with that sign in. I don't like, know. Like, oh, you can't, you can't be showing that. That's got the worst shit in it. Yeah. Well, back then, it's the fucking attitude error, man. No, not the fucking attitude error. 
that was back when they could get a little, man, I remember back then, they got away with a lot of stuff that you would not see today. No. No, like, like, you like, uh, remember, uh, remember, remember the incident with fucking Gold Dust and Ahmed Johnson? Yes. Where, where they were carting Ahmed back at, in the back on a fucking stretcher and they have Gold Dust go up to him and start giving him fucking mouth to mouth. Yeah. Like, you know they couldn't do nothing like that today without pissing people off. Well, then again, you don't know. I mean... You, you, know. you know, you know, you never know. It's just odd, odd times, you know. But I remember that that uh, segment, Amon Johnson. That motherfucker is powerful. Yeah. When, you, when you see him he, rip he up hard, one up, hand. right? When I seen him pick up hardcore Holly with <laughs> one fucking hand, ripped him right up, way up by the throat. I was like, yeah. holy shit, man! This fucking dude is. Powerful as fuck, you know. And after watching his uh, shoot interview a while back, after what the life that he'd gone through and the beatings he took from his dad, I said, "Yeah, no wonder why this fucking dude is on edge. This this motherfucker. Yeah. Whenever he came out, he was intense." Yeah, I it mean, was, you know, it's funny, dude. I, I remember when Ahmed Johnson first came in. Right. And I mean, when I seen him, you know, he, like I was like, dude, this guy's a fucking badass. I yeah, mean, and he was I, intense. I, I mean, he he had the, that perfect look. Like at the time when he first came in, before yeah. now, before he blew up like a blimp. Right. Uh, when he first came in in the WWF in like '95, '96, I was like, when, when they, they brought him in as his first appearance. And had him body slam Yokozuna. Right. The only other man to body slam Yokozuna was Lex Luger. Lex Luger, right? Yeah. And that and takes he power. Put that in and, and he fucking scooped Yoko up and fucking slammed him like it was nothing. Yeah, because he was a powerful and, ass dude, man. Yeah. I mean, when they did they, when they debuted him like that, when you come in and body slam Yokozuna, you're thinking. Dude, this guy's gonna be a bad motherfucker, you know. And oh yeah, for for the whole like '96, you know, they were building him up pretty good, and you know they had they put the intercontinental title on him. He was on his way to fucking have a champion versus champions match with Shawn Michaels. Right. And then like like out of the blue, he just started getting injured. Like he suffered like a, I think a kidney infection, and then. Like that that took all of this fucking momentum away. He had to give up the belt, he had to go away for a few months to heal up, then they came back and he just never it just seemed like, you know, he was still a badass, but he just didn't have that fucking momentum like he couldn't get that momentum back. Right. And I think he did yeah. leave on bad terms with WWF at that time because Vince wouldn't let him go to see his sister who was dying. Yeah. You know, and he said, well, if she ain't, like, literally dying or something, I can't let you go. He's like, well, fuck you, man, I'm out. You know? Yeah. Well, not, not only that, too, but there, there's um, the story I heard, too, is that what got him fired is that they wanted, they wanted um, Ahmed to fucking job to, um, uh, this fucking guy they were building up at one point named Kurgan who was like a seven foot tall like supposed to be like the next big monster guy and it and they were and like I'm just like no nah, man I ain't putting this motherfucker over fuck you <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah. Even, I don't know I've heard a few different things but you know all in all you know Amon Johnson was very intense yeah. And powerful <laughs> as hell. I know, know he threw he threw a temper tantrum because they wanted hit, they wanted uh, China to beat the shit out of him in a match, and I'm at the something backstage. I forgot who he was to, but he said something straight up. He's like, "I ain't let no bitch beat me up." <laughs> I was like, "Damn!" I was yeah. like, "Yeah, I don't think uh, that'd be a. I mean, being." Ahmed being as big and bad as like, you know, I mean, I get why he didn't want 
you know, yeah. it's like, you, you, know, you don't want to be this big, bad motherfucker. And then and, be knocked you know, out. And, yeah, and, and to be but. fucking just whooped up on by a woman. Well, China, uh, uh, you know, China, she was a powerful woman uh, as yeah, well. But I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, she, I mean, yeah, she... She was bad, but, but I don't she was right. She wasn't on the level of no Amma and Johnson. No, as far as power goes, I mean, a lot of guys weren't on the level of Amma and Johnson as far as power goes. You know, uh, when yeah, you see him Holly. rip people up like Hardcore Holly, I think is a badass motherfucker who looks like he could beat your ass really bad in a fight. But when it comes to Amma and Johnson, he looks like he'll fucking destroy you and eat you it, alive it'll be like, uh, in a fight. It'll be like that, uh, like Victor Crawley and, and Hatchet. He just rip you fucking limb from limb. Right. <laughs> he'll eat your motherfucking ass alive. I mean, he was he just had that yeah. craziness to him that you were like, yeah, nah, dude. He, he's not somebody you'd actually want to get in a real fight with ever. No. Like, I don't care if I had a fucking sword, a gun. I would not even try to fuck with somebody like that. No. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't, but see, it wouldn't you happen. Know, I, thought, I thought of him like that, too. But then when he, when he left and when he went to WCW, and you seen him just like, I mean, he looked, he came in like so out of shape. Right. He packed and, on weight. Well, yeah, from what and, and, huh? from what he said in the, in the shoot interview, or I think it was the shoot interview, I heard that the reason why he packed on the weight is because he w got under a really bad depression due to the fact that his sister, one of his sisters, died. You know, yeah. and so he just kind of lost all hope after that and just kind of gave up in a way. You yeah. know. Which is, which, which is sad, man. So he went through a bed. He took it really hard, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, he did pack on weight and stuff. Yeah, and then, and then you, watch, you watch him wrestle, you know, he, and, and he'd be fucking sloppy as hell. Be like, wow, dude, what, what happened? What happened to that badass that... Like that—that that he was just just like three years prior. Uh, well, like I said, he fell into a bad depression. Yeah. You, know, you know, and you just kind of lost—you lose motivation after something like that. Uh, you yeah. know, you lose your drive. You lose, you know, a lot yeah. of things. But it, yeah, I mean, it just, it, it just sucked though because like. Yeah. You know, I I looked at Ahmed Johnson '96. I said I was like, dude, this guy's gonna be a fucking star. Uh, yeah, you he know, was in a few of the WWF uh, video games, you know. Yeah. He was in In I mean, Your he House. Merchandise. He had figures out, he had shirts out, he had, like, but it's just like... Yeah, it, 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 he wasn't there too long, you know. It's yeah. just kind of like uh, the Dynamite Kid, you know, uh, when they were the British Bulldogs in the WWF in the 80s. He was only yeah. there a couple of years, and then... You know that he had that incident with one of the Ruscio brothers knocking his teeth out, and after that, he just kind of did his own thing. He didn't come back to the WWF, where Davy Boy Smith did. So, you know, uh, he's uh, you don't see him in the fucking video games or nothing. It's like, wow, you know, this guy was a fucking hell of a wrestler. You know, the Dynamite Kid, he can fucking go, dude. Yeah. I mean, think about those. Think about think about some of the best tag team matches you'll ever see in your fucking life, right? Hell yeah! Think about it. the The British Bulldogs versus the Hart Foundation, right? Yeah. You. I don't think you will ever see ever any matches better than the ones that these motherfuckers could put on back in the day. The hell no. I mean, they were they were so fucking good, you know. Yeah. That, it's like, you know what? It's like I heard on one of the Jim Cornette's podcasts. He was talking with FTR, and and they were talking about like, like, like Vince. For what they're saying, Vince does not give a shit about tag team wrestling anymore. Yeah, he doesn't give and, a shit about a lot of things. And it, and it sucks too because 
you look at like talk about the 80s and 90s all the great fucking tag teams that came out of the WWF like like I mean from the 80s to 90s you had the British Bulldogs the Heart Foundation you had the fucking Road Warriors Demolition you know the Nasty Boys you know you had all these fucking great tag for years now it's just like wow now you ain't got like I mean the they're just, they're just sticking like, okay, we're going to take you, and we're going to take you, and you're going to be a team, and we're putting the belts on you. and Blah, blah, and blah, that. right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I I don't know. I See, I don't keep up with the new product to really know anything that's going on other than, like I said, snippets of things I hear or see on YouTube, but yeah. I don't watch yeah, the current. I don't watch the current bullshit, and I would rather pop in a DVD and yeah. watch the fucking 90s, 80s, early 2000s shit. Because after, you know, when Chris Benoit died, I always looked at, like, that was kind of like the beginning of the end of wrestling. It just slowly yeah. seemed to go downhill from there. Like, when, yeah. those, yeah, when, when, like, when those guys died, right. and, like, you know, you, they had, like, Austin retired... And The Rock went to Hollywood. Right. And, you know, like, pretty much all the greats just right. went away. And yeah. then he had this new, like, up and cut, like, it's like, wow, okay, uh, yeah, uh, okay, fuck yeah. that, uh, yeah. goodbye. Yeah, now what, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's like, just slowly went downhill, and now it's, like, trash. Oh, yeah. But I do like NWA Power. I think that's a yeah. it's it's a pretty good uh, show. Even though I, I haven't really kept up with it in a while, I remember watching a bunch of the episodes when they first came out. Yeah, um, I, I I don't like the fact they changed the. I mean, I like the the fucking into the fire song they had to go along. Now they changed something else and. It's not, I mean, I, I, they did change, what the hell? Huh. They changed the music. Yeah. They, cha they changed the song, and I just don't, I don't like it. Right. I like the, the, the Into the Fire song, you know, like, I felt like it felt, it, it fitted more. Yeah, I hear you. I you think kind of, kind of, kind of gave it that. It still got like, that, like, but that song in the end, like, it gave it that that feel of old school wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because that's an old school song, I believe, from a band called Dokken. Yeah, into the fire. <laughs> that's a pretty good song. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, and also the first season is uh, either on DVD or it's coming to DVD for sure. I'd like to pick that up at some point. Yeah. You know, it's some good stuff. I tell you what I really like in NWA is uh, Thunder Rosa. Uh, yes, I agree. She is pretty cool. Yeah, and she's she fucking good bad looking babe. Ass. She's a badass looking babe, dude. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you see pictures of her without without her makeup on, dude. She is hot as fuck. I mean, yeah, she's a fucking little hottie, dude. Yeah, and I'm glad. I'm glad the company is going with her as like their champion now. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm, I'm I'm like hey, when I saw her win the championship, I was like hell yeah, good good job, Thunder Rosa. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I need to... Hell yeah. At some point, I think she's got a shoot interview uh, DVD out there. I'd like to pick that up, you know, at yeah. some point. Because I, I love shoot interviews, man. I just... Man. You like hearing all those stories. Yeah. I just love hearing the, the backstories to wrestlers. And, the you know, yeah. uh, the one that I really loved hearing last year when uh, Hannibal from Hannibal TV on YouTube was the Billy Jack Haynes uh, shoot interview, man. I said, man, this motherfucker, whew, he has, like, a lot to him. And anytime Billy Jack Haynes does a shoot interview, man, you know you're going to be motherfucking entertained because I have one oh, of them yeah. on DVD, 
and I need to get the other one on DVD, but I haven't seen the other one because it was uh, posted on YouTube, so I've seen about three or four shooting interviews with Billy Jack Haynes, and I can tell you, everyone is entertaining, and that motherfucker, he was a, you know, a legit tough guy back in the 80s, he could kick ass, yeah. dude, and he did, he kicked, he fucked some of these wrestlers, I mean, he beat... What was what's the what's the one wrestler? I want to say it's Iron Mike Sharp. Yeah. That he fucking beat the living fuck out of back in the eighties. They yeah. got in, they got into a real bad fight. I think that was the wrestler. I could be wrong about that, but yeah, he 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 uh he beat up some motherfuckers. I mean, if you go back and watch that shoot interview with Hannibal, that was really good oh yeah and not just that just like the some of the dvds uh, and there's uh they got a face-off dvd between hannibal and uh billy jack haynes that i'd like to pick up i'd like to see that one that's a feature buy for sure uh because that does look uh uh pretty cool but yeah, shoot, in, shoot, shoot interviews are my thing because I just, I love hearing backstories on these wrestlers and like, you know, what got yeah. them interested in wrestling, what, you know, what what made them want to get into it, you know, who influenced them and, you know, the training aspects of everything and, you know, uh, dealing with the stuff like behind the scenes. See, that's one thing that I would love to see is a documentary on like just all of the behind the scenes shit that goes on in wrestling you know yeah. usually when you get documentaries it's usually on a wrestler and whatnot but I want to see like what goes on backstage you know that would be really cool I think you know yeah. you know hearing people talking about wrestling kind of like uh, that one documentary that was done years ago with uh, about Jake the Snake and uh, uh, Mick Foley Beyond, Beyond, the mat. Beyond the Mat. Yeah, something like that, you know. Yeah. I want to see more like, you know, uh, how they prep, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know. Like, you know, like, like them traveling, you know, like, like, remember, they, they did uh, something like that years ago with, uh, with that MTV special called True Life. Yeah, yeah. Where I remember they, that. Uh, they, they did they, something they, on they WWF. Followed, yeah, they followed, uh, they were following uh, Triple H in China. Yeah. Who, who were getting ready for a big uh, match coming up, and then they, they 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 were showing like people who were so, people that were in the in the present and the past and the future. Like right. the past guy was Tony Atlas, and the right. present was Triple H, and they had supposedly the future star was. Uh, young kid coming up that just sucked at wrestling basically yeah i remember that and i think it's it's probably uh on youtube yeah you know uh, that's that's back then when stuff was really cool when they had shows like true life you know true life i'm a gamer i remember watching yeah. that many times um True Life, uh, uh, Jersey, Summer Share, yeah, Summer Share one, Summer Share with the Tommy guy. He was a fucking yeah. loose cannon, dude. Holy moly! Do you remember the part? Remember the part where he did, where he got like so drunk that he puked. He's like, he's standing in the bathroom. He's like, I puked. Yes, I puked. Yes, I did. And he, and he started just, like bitching at some guy that was in the bathroom, like. Hey, you better turn around and get out of this bathroom before you get knocked the fuck out. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was a loose cannon, but I, I could tell what his problem was is he just wanted to be in love with a girl, and he didn't have that. And so he just, like, any anybody that did any wrong he would it, it, that weren't his friends, he would kind of, like, snap like at. he'd want to fight. Yeah, he'd want to fight. He looked like he could fight, too, you know. You know, so yeah, he looked like he could scrap. He, yeah, he looked like a scrapper. That was a pretty cool episode. Yeah. Um, but uh, I like when he, I like when he's bitching out the guy that's putting the ticket on that car. He's like, put that ticket on. My, he's like, put that ticket on my car. Put that ticket on my car. Is your name on it? Is your name on it? Yeah, let me tell you one thing. I mean, never gonna be a cop down here. He's like, he's like walking away at one point. He goes, excuse me, is that a threat? Did you just 
threatened me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he he's, he was on edge. That's why they probably just focused mostly on him throughout that episode and not much on the other people because he yeah. was the entertaining one, you know. But yeah, that that was back then when MTV was doing some cool stuff, you know. Yeah. They did the Osbournes back then in the early two thousands. Yeah, um, the True Life. Beavis and Butthead on too. Yeah, Beavis and Butthead, I believe, started there on MTV in the early nineties. Yeah, that the MTV was great in the nineties and early two thousands. I don't know about now because I don't yeah. watch it now. But Damn. man, different times. I wish I could go back to those times because man, that was just more simple and fun times. And you're young and you're like. Hell yeah, the, you know, it was more fun to play video games back then, you know, it, it was more simple, like, you just popped in a game, in your game system, and played it, and nowadays, yeah. you have to fucking, you, you get a, your game system, you have to take it online, you have to sign in online, or whatever, sign in, and then you have to update your system, which takes anywhere from like a half an hour to an hour, and then you gotta fucking, when you put in a game, it takes up all these gigs, and it's like that takes another fucking half an hour to an hour to load, which fucking kind of kills the fucking fun of things. I just want to fucking buy a game, pop it in and play it. I don't want to wait an hour or two just to fucking update the shit and sign in and jump through hoops. Fuck that. You know? Oh, yeah. You know, so that's my pet peeve about games. Now versus then. Yeah. Back then it was way more fun and simple. The way it should be now. Yeah, you like know? Nintendo, Sega Genesis, all that shit. You just put your game out, game in, right? Start fun, bam! You're you know automatically it's like yeah. Oh, you gotta you gotta, you gotta download this. Yeah. Fucking do this, and you gotta take this. Right. Blah, blah, blah. It's like yeah, yeah uh, it's just, it's like it's almost like you just want to be like ah no thanks fuck it I'm going back to old school school that's why mostly I just play old school games and uh, it's just more fun to me and simple you know uh, there are some good games out there that are newer but I want to say the the most for the most part it's old school rules you know hell yeah brother you know we grew up in the 90s me and you dude in the 90s we would play Mario Kart like yeah. a motherfucker Play Golden Eye. Oh yeah, we play Golden Eye like a motherfucker. Except you always cheat like a bitch. Cheat on what Golden Eye? And it's like it's like oh I know when you after I kill you I know right where you're gonna pop back up at and I'm gonna kill you again. Oh yeah you yeah know, oh, I got pretty good at that. Fucking time, dude! You'd be like. Like you do, like oh, guess what? You're gonna pop back up over here. So as soon as I pop back up, boom! Oh, oh, now you're gonna pop up over here. Okay, boom! Right. I'm like you motherfucker, can't you just let me pop up and let me fight you, dude. Yeah. Well, I was you uh. Wait until I appear and you'd be right there to fucking kill me, dude. I, like yeah. Motherfucker. I used to love playing GoldenEye when it was like you, me, and Angelo, and we would like face off against each other, try to you know do the one one shot kills. Or yeah. or the, just a regular killing and uh, yeah we played a lot of that and we also played a lot of you know Mario Kart I love the you know the the part where you, you have to pop each other's balloon the win that, yeah. that that shit was fun dude I mean Mario Kart 64 on the Nintendo 64 was fun that was our game dude that yeah. was our fucking game that was our game dude yeah. And I got footage of us, I think, back in, like, 99 or 2000, gaming it up with Mario Kart, but I didn't have the camera actually on the fucking TV. I had it on Angelo the whole time, and him talking a whole bunch of shit, dude. You had it on all of us at first, and then, like, well, fuck, and then you you decided to put it on Angelo, because, hell, he's the one that always comes up with funny shit. Yeah, he's the one who always would say off the wall funny shit, and I was like, "Well, fuck it, I'm I'm gonna get him on camera," which I kind of regret. I re I wish I could have just like filmed the gameplay itself. And yeah, you wanted to film like everything. Yeah, but you know, at least I did get at least I did get a couple of games um, filmed back in the '90s, which is a 
It's a cool. It's cool to watch those. You know, take a trip back Brilliant. twenty plus years and look at the stuff that we did, the the backyard wrestling that we did. Um, yeah. Like in the snow where I had Angelo up and I, I power bombed him on the ground, but his uh, his foot had hit the uh, the, the clothesline, the clothesline yeah. wire, and that was an accident. But I mean, it was funny as fuck. And then I came down on him with the leg, you know. Yeah, and you're like, you, know, you <laughs> stand back and you're like, yeah, you're like, watch this. And as soon as you start charging, man, you look up and you hear him go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, those were good times, man. We all we all I had remember, good times. Remember when you picked them up and like a- Angelo, like you were gonna do like a move where you picked them up and like threw them forward, but he thought the way you were picking them up, you were gonna drop them on the ground. Oh and yeah. You picked them up and he looks down and goes and starts like freaking out, going, "Huh." Oh, that's not the snow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought I was gonna yeah, fucking like, bring him down on the cement. Uh, I'm yeah. not. I'm not that crazy. You no, know, you some, don't hurt him like that. Yeah, I'm not gonna hurt him like some of these crazy fucking backyard wrestlers do it, man. You yeah, know, that, just that, like that, shit, that, that shit's a little bit too much. Like man. some of it's pretty cool, but like the other stuff where you set your friends on fire or jump off houses, I think that's insane. Yeah. You know, and you know, you know what? You know what? Growing up as a kid, you know, I I, lo- I loved wrestling. Like you know, me, my friends, we would all you know. Oh yeah, I know, dude. We would all, we would we would always act like you know we, we we were fucking WWF superstars, and you know, right? We would actually we, we would have matches like out in the yard, but you know, we knew how to play it safe, right? Because you know, we wanted like. Act like you know, like like oh, I clothesline you. Oh, you go down, and oh, right. I get the elbow. Well, you and, were, and, and, huh? You were the wrestling buff back in the day, dude. You were the, you were well, the, yeah. You got, I've been, in, you know, you figure I started. What year I did you start getting, watching wrestling? About, about eighty five. Eighty five. I started watching. I want to say in eighty seven, eighty eight. Yeah. When I was I, I was a real I young kid. Watching. Yeah, I were getting into WWF. I think shortly after the very first WrestleMania, it was, it was in between WrestleMania one and WrestleMania two. Okay. At some point, because I know one of the very first match. I mean, maybe not okay. the first match that I saw, oh. but one of the matches that I really. That, well, hold on. I was about to ask you. Like, that's how, that's what I was, wanted to ask you about. What was the very first match that you can remember watching as a kid in the 80s? And I'll tell you mine after you tell me yours. Okay. All right. The first what? match that I ever watched, I, I can remember. I mean, I probably, I, I know for a fact I watched wrestling before this match, but I can't remember any of the matches. Well, just tell me the first one that you can remember. The first match I can remember was Hulk Hogan versus Don Morocco on Saturday night's main event. Okay. Because that match always stands out because, like, after the match, King Kong Bundy came in and they beat the shit out of Hulk. They squashed him in the corner a bunch of times. Right. Laid, laid him out in the middle of the ring, gave him a couple of big splashes, and then, like, did, their, did like a pose and walked off and he brought in all the fucking rustlers and the paramedics and right. you know Hulk's fucking laying there acting like he can't fucking breathe and he's like Ugh. <laughs> and I, I actually remember I remember I remember seeing, seeing that and I actually remember like because you know being so young not knowing you know right well, not knowing what I know about the wrestling today. Well, well, plus you were like a kid, like six years yeah, old I was, or something. I, I, like I was, yeah, I was fucking... Six or seven. Six or seven years old at right. the time. And I'm seeing, you know, my, my fucking hero, the, you know, Hulk Hogan just getting fucking squashed by some fucking 450-pound <laughs> dude yeah. laying there fucking clutching his chest and fucking... 
you know, like they're got the fucking, you know, the stretcher out, putting them on, and they're carting them off into the back, and, you know, you're, you're thinking, dude, he just got squashed, he is fucked, you know, and I just remember fucking watching that and crying. Wow. Yeah, like, that's, that was over 30 funny, years you know, ago, dude. Yeah. You know, and it's funny now, I think about it now, thinking, man, I, I you know, I can't believe, because, you know, they actually have that match on YouTube. They got the full fucking match, and even the aftermath, where they're cart Hulk out on the fucking stretcher and shit. Right. You know, trying to rush him to the hospital, and everybody's thinking, and, and I, I remember, it was, it was so funny, the very, like, they had the Saturday Night's main event, and their next, like, I think their next episode of wrestling, it was like they had a Piper's Pit, which the right. Piper, who, who was a heel at the time, he brought out King Kong Bundy and Bobby Heenan, and they were just sitting there, just gloating about what they did to him. Like, wow. like, oh, man. like Piper's like talking all this shit, like, you finally gave the world what they wanted. You wanted to, you know, the man who finally put down Hulk Hogan. Wow, yeah. And that, That's... And that, and that, and that was the whole lead up to WrestleMania 2, the cage match between Hogan and Bundy. You know what? It's funny, my first memories, the first match I remember watching to this day was also a Hulk Hogan match. And yeah. I don't know what year it had happened. You can, you can like, you can tell me because you'll know better than me. But I remember I went over to my uncle's house, right? Yeah. My, my uncle Mark. You, I believe you know him. You've hung out with him, and yeah. he ordered this pay per view event, or maybe it was on cable. I'm not 100 percent sure because it was over 30 years ago, but. Yeah. It was a cool ass event. It was it, it was it was a match. There was a match between Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant, right? And this yeah. this actually we were watching it live as it happened on TV. And I remember um, Hulk Hogan lost to Andre the Giant because yeah, because of the referee. I, I, I remember exactly what you're talking. Well, hold about, on. Dude. The referee had a twin brother, and he screwed yeah. he screwed Hulk Hogan over. That match I remember watching as it happened over 30 years yeah. ago. Now, and what what you know, was that? What match was that? Was that a, like a, it, a, 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 a? It was a, it was a, it was a Saturday night's main event. Okay, so he it wasn't a pay per view then. No, it it was it was booked as the the I remember they booked that match. It was like the return match. It was like shit. It was what year was, was that? Nineteen eighty seven, eighty eight. I want to say probably eighty eight because I remember that's when the title like as Hulk was the champion because Andre beat him and then Andre fucking sold the belt to fucking Ted DiBiase and then Jack Taylor like. Oh no, you can't sell it. I'm gonna hold the belt up. We're gonna have this big tournament in WrestleMania four yeah. to crown a new WWF champion. And that was when it was uh won by Mr. Ooh, yeah, the yeah. Macho Man. Yeah, but that match I actually remember watching, you know, as it you know, that happened. Yeah, I, I, I did too. That was uh, you know, that I think that's like one of the only matches I can remember back in the 80s still to this day. Yeah. You know, seeing as a kid. And you know what? It just, like, wrestling back then just was so over the yeah. fucking top, man. It was so cool. Versus now, it's such trash. If you were alive during the 80s and 90s and watched wrestling as it was going on, dude, yeah. you were really part of something awesome. You know, <laughs> if if you if you know, sorry for you know, like the people that were born twenty years ago that missed out on some really cool yeah. stuff. You know, well, like kids today that think this wrestling is cool today. Yeah. It's like no, no, dude. Sorry, sorry to say, people out there, but this wrestling today is fucking garbage. Yeah, yeah, and we're putting that politely. It's fucking trash. Yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, back I mean, then this, it was so this cool. Roughly, this roughly the day can, uh, cannot hold even a fucking candle. To, to the fucking wrestling back in the nine eighties, nineties, early two thousands, know, right? Yeah, like yeah. I mean, it, like they, like these rest, these all the top, pretty, pretty much all the top wrestlers today would be pretty much fucking jobbers, right? Compared to, to, to compare to the wrestlers back, back then, in those right. days. Back then, you had the ultimate fucking, you know. Uh, alpha males, man, they were fucking, yeah. you know, tough guys, you know, uh, you know, beating asses, you know, and yeah, those were the days, man, man, I love the good old days of wrestling, dude. I do too. I just, uh, that's, when I, when I watch wrestling, it's because I'm popping in a DVD of something that is older, you know, like, yeah. WrestleManias, older ones, you know. Oh yeah. Um, match compilations of you know stuff from the '90s or the '80s. Like you know. I, I watch, I watch old episodes, like you know what they were putting on YouTube now. They got like old uh, episode, like from like the '90s of like WCW, of like WCW Saturday Night, you know, and the Nitros and. Right. And shows like that, it's like yeah. man. I man. miss. I also miss the like the uh, head to head WCW had with WWF at the time, where yeah. you know they were kind of like going head to head, you know. And uh, uh, the WCW for a while was getting some badass ratings, and you know Eric Bischoff was kicking ass. Yeah, you know I liked I, how I he. Tell you, I tell you, I tell you, it was fucking funny. Was in a Kevin Nash uh, shoot. He um, when uh, when DX was trying to invade uh, WCW, Kevin Nash said he was like, "Man, I tell you, if if I could have got these, like if I if we could have gotten outside to where Ch Triple H and all them were standing, he, he said he, he would because it was you know it would it had been WWF's cameras there." He wishes more than anything he could just walked out there, looked at DX, and right on WWF's uh, camera, going, uh, "The fuck you guys doing here?" <laughs> 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 How funny would that would have been? DX out there doing their skit, and all of a sudden you see Kevin Nash walk up and he just yells, uh, "The fuck you guys doing here?" <laughs> yeah. Speaking of Kevin Nash, I don't know if you remember this, but back in. Um I want to say, I don't know, like 99 or 2000, they got invited to MTV to show up for some sort of MTV yeah, event. Yeah, I remember that. Him, fucking the kid, the some kid, kid threw a rock throwing rocks. Him. I remember watching that when uh, that came on. That It was uh, Kevin Nash, and they also had uh, Razor Ramon there. And uh, he chased this fucking kid, and he grabbed him, put him on the ground, and I was thinking, dude, I'll, you know, he, the kid is lucky that Kevin Nash didn't fucking ground and pound this motherfucking kid's head in, you know? Yeah. Because he, I remember him, like, pointing his finger, man, like, you motherfucker, you better <laughs> never do that again, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. I, but I remember <laughs> seeing that thinking, holy shit. I think uh, parts of that, or maybe the whole thing might be on YouTube as well. I remember seeing that. And how? Pretty, pretty much every damn thing is on YouTube yeah, now. Yeah, pretty much. And then sometimes a lot of good shit gets taken off, which sucks. Yeah, I know. But I remember meeting Kevin, when we met Kevin Nash at the Motor City Comic Con back in, what, 2009? Yep. Something like that. He made me look like a fucking little kid. Oh, I know. Same, same with me. I mean, I, I, no, but you're taller than me, and you know, and I look at that picture sometimes. I'm like, man, I look like a small ass person <laughs> yeah. compared to him. He's fucking like big, you know. Yeah, I know. But you gotta figure, dude. You know, I always thought, hell, I always thought I'm a big motherfucker, dude. I'm, you know, six three, six four. 
And I'm thinking, man, you know, I'm pretty damn tall. Yeah. I stand up to Kevin Nash, <laughs> and I feel, like, I feel like I'm only about five foot tall. Yeah, I know. Standing next to Kevin Nash. And by the way, that was pretty cool when we went to the Motor City Comic Con. You got to talk to, yeah. uh, you got to talk to the, the Honky, Honky Talk Man. man. Honky Talk Man was cool as cool can be. Yeah, man. And it's funny because it's funny that I never really gave a shit about the Honky Talk Man back in the day. I always just, I, like, I thought he was an asshole. And and then, um, you know, meeting him, getting the chance to talk to him, seeing how fucking cool he was. And yeah, and he didn't even charge you much to take a picture with him. Only ten dollars. No. He, 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 he charged me like half, half of what fucking Kevin Nash got. Yeah, Kevin Nash charged twenty at the time, and 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 Honky Tonk Man only charged ten. And nowadays, these these wrestlers at the Motor City Comic Con, they want like, you know, seventy, eighty dollars, you know. That's for, ridiculous. Like, I'm sorry, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna fucking go. You know, I mean, there'd be a there'd be a few certain wrestlers. Maybe, oh yeah, that, that would be worth like. But then again, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Right, but I mean, yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe like maybe if I got to meet like you know like Stone Cold Steve Austin right, or right, I hear you. You know, somebody like that. That that you know, I'd be like, okay, fuck yeah, here's a hundred bucks. Right. Let me get my picture taken with a red that and be like, hey, Stone Cold, <laughs> drop me with a Stone Cold Stunner. Oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that was some good times back when uh, I used to go to Comic Cons. I went for like three years in a row. I, I think I hit the 2007, 2008, and 2009, and that was it. Yeah. Um, and I got to meet Mick Foley. I met Kevin Nash. I met the Honky Tonk yeah. Man. Um, I met Virgil. Uh, who was that? Uh, who Who was that women wrestler that was there? Do you, Christy Hemme? Yeah. Yeah, she was there. Um, you almost got a chance to meet Mick Foley, but he was he didn't show up for some reason or he was late. You know? Yeah. We were waiting around for him. He was supposed to be there at a certain time. Um, but then like an hour or two later, he still hadn't showed up, so we ended up leaving, you know? Yeah. But... That would have been cool for you to meet him. I met him the year beforehand. He was pretty cool. You know, uh, very nice guy. Uh, Virgil, on the other hand, uh, you know, when I was going to take a picture of you and Honky Tonk Man, he, like, slapped me on my shoulders. You know, and he was, yeah. he, was <laughs> he was like, hey, you want me to take the picture? I was like, oh, yeah, sure. So he was the one that just, ended up. Just, just, just don't hit me no more. Yeah, just don't hit me no more, man. Don't hit me no more. Um, and he asked me if, you know, did you want to take a picture? I was like, oh, no, I'm all right. I probably should have, you know. Um, but you did get a signed autograph from Virgil. Yeah. Um, I still have it to this day. Yeah. And I believe, the, I, I believe I blew that picture up or one of the pictures up for you and sent it to you framed. Yeah. Which is cool. I'd like to go back to the Comic Con again. I almost went to... The uh, 2017 Comic Con, and because I wanted to meet Big Van Vader, he was going to be there that year. Or no, he yeah he did go that year, and I was going to go. It was uh, you know everything was set ready to go, but like the night before, I did not get no sleep whatsoever, and like wow. I was up all night and shit, and like two hours before the fucking event started I had passed out and I said nah fuck it I, I would have been dragging ass I would have been I, I, I'd say it ain't worth it to, to you know when you ain't got sleep you know uh, you just you, yeah. you, you feel really off you know and it's like but I do regret not meeting him because like a year later he did you know pass away you know wow. and I really wish I would have got to meet him take a picture with him you know, have him sign some stuff, but man, yeah, that was the that one time I do right, I do no. regret. Uh, but I'm hoping that maybe you know in 2021, maybe if I got some extra money, go to the Motor City Comic Con and you know meet some wrestlers, maybe um, have them sign something. I don't know if they're not too damn expensive. <laughs> How about the one year after 
the one year fucking Molly Holly was there at the damn Comic Con and it's like man I want to fucking go so bad like yeah I would do that that would have been awesome if I could have got yeah. like you know like my picture taken with like Molly Holly that would have been like been like yeah. hell yeah I believe um uh I want to say um Roddy Piper was there at the Motor City Comic Con the year he died, I think back in 2015, I want to say. I'm not 100% sure. And then in 2016, uh, China was supposed to be at the Motor City Comic Con, but like two or three weeks, that's when she had died, you know. Yeah. Unfortunately, which was uh, pretty sad, man. Yeah. Uh, so, and then, yeah, Vader in 2017, I think Shawn Michaels went there in 2019, which is, a, that's kind of rare to see him, you know, show up to a Comic-Con, but he was charging a lot of money for picture. Yeah. To take a picture, I think, was like $90, and autograph was like 75 something like that. I'm like, fuck. You know, yeah, I'll take days at twenty twenty five dollars. You know, I mean, I'm cool with paying like thirty, maybe forty bucks, but I mean, I I don't want to pay a hundred bucks for somebody just to sign something. You know, yeah. And they're already fucking rich on top of that, so you know, it's like, what the fuck, man? You're trying to like milk your fucking fan base, you yeah. know? But if it was like the Undertaker showing up at the Comic Con, I would have said, all right, fuck it, I'll pay whatever, yeah. fuck it. Because that, that would have been really rare, and he is a fucking legend. It'd be like, it'd be like me back, you know, back in the late 90s when Sonny, you know, was wrestling. Man, I, I probably had the biggest crush on her more than anybody, dude. Really? I thought she was smoking fucking hot. When she, well, like back, she was back, back in when that she, age. When she, yeah, like 95, 96. Oh yeah. I was like, dude, she is badass, and but like, yeah. I, I, I thought, man, if she ever showed up to a comic con, man, I, that'd be even though she's older now and she doesn't look that great. Well, yeah, she did. You know, pack but, on but you know, you know what though? She, to me, she still looks okay. Like you know, like if if she got if if she came to me, and be like, hey, you want to you know, want to be my boyfriend? Be like. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but the odds of that happening are uh, slim. Ever, 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 ever come, ever come in the bedroom to that? <laughs> I know you want me. Yeah, I know right. you want me, baby. I know. <laughs> yeah, right. Not now. I mean, maybe '96. That would have been a, a yeah. dream come true, but not 2020. Yeah. You know? But yeah, she she had it going on back in the day. Yeah, I, yeah. Anyway, I, it starts because she was so hot. She had like, like she had all, probably all the guys in the world fucking like just thinking about her and knowing that she could have been like a, a big star. And she just fucked it all up with them drugs and alcohol and and. It's like now she's in and out of jail and in and out oh, of rehabs, and it's like she has packed on a quite a bit of weight over the years. Well, and, and you see her now, and you're just like, I mean, you can only you can only think to feel fucking so bad for her. Like, oh, yeah. man, it's like you look at her now, and then you, like you remember how sunny was in the '90s, how beautiful she was. And now you're just like, damn, Sonny, what happened to you, girl? <laughs> Life happens, man. Some people fucking. I mean, I know she went path. through a, a bad spell when you know when Chris Candido died, but. Oh yeah, yeah. He went out a bad way, man. That sucks. <sighs> you know what, dude? They, I mean, uh, Sonny does have a um, a shoot interview where she talked about. You know the day that Chris Candido died, and yeah. it it was so sad that you know as she was telling 
something about it. She just broke out fucking tears. Like, she, she was saying about how they went to the hospital because he had fluid in his lungs. Right. And, and they told him they were going to take him out in back and drain his lung out. And then they said, you know, they were like talking to each other for a minute and just saying, okay, I'll see you in a minute when I get out of this. All right, baby, I love you. And then they went back and then, and then like, it was like some time later, doctor came out and said that he, he had died. Yeah, that's insane. And she just said, like, she just said that she just started freaking out, like, what? No. What? What are you, what, what are you talking about? Like, and when it was revealed that, you know, he died because, because, you know, draining his lung out was the worst thing, that, you know, because when they drained his lung out, the fucking blood clot went to his fucking heart. Right. That sucks, man. That's a horrible way to go. Yeah, I mean... You never know when your time is, you know, it's going to happen. That's why you got to... You got to live, you got to... You got to live it up. Like, you got to live a day, you know, like, you know, the way <coughs> I do it now, I, I live just pretty much day to day. Right, live it up, man. Have fun and, you know, ride the, the wave of life while you can, man, because you're going to grow old. We're going to pass away one day, you know, so... All this hate that's going on nowadays is fucking pointless because you're gonna pass one day. You fucking yeah. man, people need to fucking wake up, man. You know. Yeah. But yeah, because you never know. Time is sh short. We only got so much time here, and then we don't know what happens after we die. We don't a hundred percent know because we haven't died yet. <laughs> you know. Uh, we yeah. can, we can guess. We can guess until the fucking cows come home, until but until we're actually dead and uh, poss possibly come back, you know, uh, who knows what happens, you know. But yeah, that's a that's a trip. How he went out. That sucks, man. Damn right. You know, a lot of wrestlers, you know, over the years, um, man, they go out. A lot of them go out early, you know. Uh, you know, so many good ones have went out, you know, in the past 30 years. You know, Macho Man is gone. Andre the Giant is gone. Roddy Piper, gone. You know, it's funny. I, I thought about it. You realize every opponent that Hulk Hogan had at every WrestleMania is, like, dead now. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, uh... Like, like, like WrestleMania 1, Roddy Piper. Gone. Dead. At WrestleMania 2, King Kong Bundy. Yep, he's dead. gone. R WrestleMania 3, Andre the Giant. Dead. dead. Well, I mean, well, WrestleMania 4, he kind of, he fought Andre again. Right. WrestleMania 5, the Macho Man. Gone. Dead. WrestleMania 6, the Ultimate Warrior. Dead. You know, WrestleMania 7, yeah, he did fight Sergeant Slaughter. You know, Slaughter, I mean, as far as I know, he's still yeah, alive. Yeah, he's still alive as of in Rus right now. In Rus yeah, in the WrestleMania 8, he fought Sid. Sid's still alive. Yeah. And then WrestleMania 9, his last WrestleMania, he, he did, remember he ran into that quick squash match on fucking Yokozuna. Which, by the way, dead. Yeah, Yokozuna's gone. I liked him. They should have, and you know what? They never did nothing with Yokozuna as far as like a documentary or a match compilation. I'm like, why? You know? What the fuck? Yeah. You know? There's so many wrestlers that, that they could do match compilations on or documentaries. They never gotten around to doing like Yokozuna, Doink the Clown, you know, yeah. uh, Vader. Bam Bam Bigelow, you know. I'd like yeah, to I see. I like. I remember Yokozuna. Like he was one of those guys. Like, like you know, you always. That's what they don't have anymore in wrestling. Yeah. You know, they don't have those big, huge, like heels anymore. Like people like King Kong Bundy and Yokozuna and Earthquake and. Yeah. You know who were just you know, like. 
like you know like Yokozuna he could always like you know they always do the injury angle where you know he would you know beat up somebody and then drop a bunch of bonsai drops on him and you know like it's like they don't do anything like that anymore well those days are gone they passed bro <laughs> Yeah. The good old days are gone, man. Yeah, oh yeah. It's but yeah. I would love to see documentaries on a lot of these wrestlers that, you know, are no yeah. longer around, you know. I like uh, I like to see I like to see a documentary on uh Tatanka. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'd like to see one done on uh Bam Bam Bigelow and Vader. I believe there is one there is one a documentary in the works on um, China and Vader. It, it's been in the works for years, but uh, uh, you know it's taken forever for them to finish it. Yeah. You know, I know uh, uh, a while before China died, they were working on a documentary. She was talking about that same thing with Vader. They were talking about a documentary when he found out, you know, that the. Uh, uh, at the hospital, like he was told, he had like two years to live, and sure enough, two years later, he was gone because of his uh, heart condition. Because it's a hard life for these wrestlers to have to fucking travel every single night and wrestle every night. You know, yeah. you're really fucking towing a body. Yeah. You know, big time. That's you know. You know, and people bash on wrestling, calling it fake. I could tell you something right now. Real wrestling versus what people call fake wrestling. The fake wrestling is actually way more hardcore than the real wrestling. Okay? Because these real wrestlers, they wrestle every night. I mean, these so-called fake wrestlers, they wrestle every night. These real wrestlers, they only wrestle once in a while. I used to wrestle back in seventh grade, and I never got the injuries that uh, these so-called fake wrestlers got. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, well, you know what? I mean, you, you see, like the real wrestling. You know, real the, wrestling is just like I said, two guys. Two, right. You know, trying to put each other's shoulders on the on the mat. Not, yeah, you're not fucking like like get thrown around and right. doing crazy flips off right. the top like yeah check out this double move right. saw fucking try yeah. the fucking flying leg drop and you're definitely not wrestling every single night you know so yeah. the the entertainment version is way more hardcore and m way more I want to say dangerous and you're putting your body more on the line than any kind of real wrestling I can tell you that yeah. You know, the only injury that I got when I was wrestling back in 91 was I had the kid underneath me and he had uh, brought his head up and he hit my jaw. And Ouch. my tongue was a little bit, you know, out. So I kind of bit into my tongue. So we had to stop the match because I bit into my tongue and I was bleeding. So I had to go to the bathroom and wash the blood out and all that shit. But that was the oh, yeah. only that was the only injury that I got. The, these the fucking entertainment wrestling wrestlers, they get fucking they get stiffed by big dudes. They get slammed off the fucking mat. They get clotheslined. They jump off the fucking ropes. I mean, yeah. and they're doing this every yeah, night. Like all, all I mean, look at look at fucking draws. One yeah. one one slip up on one move. Fucking cost him his, 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 you know, he, he's wheelchair bound for the rest right. of his life. Right, yeah, he's fucking paralyzed for life. And, and look, one, one wrong move. Yeah, that's it, that's all it takes. One little, one little fucking slip. Yep. And real wrestlers and, and, don't have to and, do and your, that type. Your whole, your whole, every, you know, imagine, dude, that, that reminds me of fucking Million Dollar Baby. Oh, remember yeah, how, yeah, you're right. Remember how, like, like Hillary Swing, she had everything, she had everything 
going the way that she wanted it. She was about to become like, you know, fighting, you know, the big names of boxing. And then one one little wrong move with the chick fucking, you know, that was, and I thought that was fucked up too, fucking cheek shot in her. Yeah, she got paralyzed. And, and I'm saying, look, one, one wrong move getting cheap and falling on that fucking, uh, that stool, fucking one move took everything away. Yep. That's a good movie, by the way. I've seen that at the theaters. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I don't, I don't tear up a lot in, you know, watching a movie. Right. But, but that ending scene where Clint Eastwood would come up, came into the room and, t- and told her that He's gonna kill her. Oh yeah, I, yeah, I forgot about that. And, yeah, and, that was heartbreaking. And, and, yeah, and he's telling her about like he's gonna take, he's gonna turn her. He's like telling her like what he's gonna do. He's like I'm gonna turn the oxygen off, and that's that's gonna put you to sleep. Yeah, that was yeah, sad as fuck. He's dude. like yeah, and I'm gonna give you this sh- this shot of a drum. You know, he's got, he shows on a needle. He's like I'm gonna give you this shot of a drum here. And it's gonna keep you asleep. And yeah. when he said that, you you see the shot of like Hillary Schwank's face, and she just gets like this big smile across her face, like 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 she's fucking cool with it. Well, yeah. I mean, what else could she do? You know, she was a vegetable, pretty much. Yeah, it's like you know. I mean, it's like. And then, you know what, dude? If, if it came down to it, like that was—I mean, it would suck. You know, I wouldn't want to go out thinking that, like, you know, somebody had to fucking put me out of my misery. You know, rather be like you or somebody else. Like, I don't want you know you have to do that. I wouldn't want to be put in that position. No, I, either way, I wouldn't want to be. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to have been Hillary Schwank, or I wouldn't want to have been fucking Clint Eastwood. Yeah, that this movie. is a yeah. That was a pretty fucked up, man. It was a really good, yeah. good movie. Powerful. R- really fucking good, dude. Oh yeah, Clint Eastwood can direct some really good movies and act in movies as well, really well. Yeah. He's been doing it long before we were even born, dude. I, I like I like his his older movies. He like every which way but loose and any which way you can. Yeah, one of my all time favorites right there. Yeah, yeah. The the fight scenes in those films were pretty good. Yeah, you know it's you know it's funny though. So if you go back and you watch, oh, I believe it. I believe it was those films. It might have been other. What was some other films that he did some fight scenes in? Oh uh, shit. Didn't he do like a, a movie where he was like a fighter or something and he had to box people? Or not box, but just fist fight people. Yeah, like, like, like fist fight them? Yeah. That was Every Which Way But Loose. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that was a pretty good movie. It was the one where he had the fucking orangutan with a Okay, line. yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that was pretty good. It's been such a long time since I've watched any of his older stuff. Good actor, good director. Yeah. You know what though? I didn't like every I didn't like the fight scenes never which way but loose because if you know every one of Clint Eastwood's fights were were all one sided fights. Yeah. Like he he only lost that last fight at the end of the movie because he let the guy win. Yeah, it's been out a while of, since I, I've I, seen I, it. Yeah, out of respect, because the guy's, a, you know, that guy was one of the toughest, you know, feared fighters for years, and the fact that Clint Eastwood was, like, humiliating him by whipping his ass, and was like, oh, man, this is the new take Murdoch! And, like, even all, like, his people were, like, turning on him, like, oh, man, you're all washed up. And Clint looked around and was like, you know what, fuck this, you know, I got too much respect for this guy to fucking let, let him be talked to like this. I'll, just, I'll let him land a good punch and 
let it put me down. Let him have his one last moment. Uh, right on. You know? Yeah. Good old school, cool movies. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's good times, man. What was that like? The late time for us to end this podcast for the night, dude. Oh yeah, yeah. It's been going on for uh, (laughs) for two hours now. So yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, everybody, but you know I do have to get up here like (laughs) six, seven hours to go to work. So yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I I would, I would love, I would love to keep this going all fucking night. Believe me, I could keep this going all night, but we'll we'll save it for another time. I mean, uh, yeah. We got there's plenty of you know we'll be doing more podcasts and all that in the future for sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we, we we wanted to make this tonight to let everybody get a truth. Where ah, I'm so tired I can't even think straight. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Yeah, we're just making a podcast off the cuff, man. We're just talking about random yeah. shit like movies, wrestling. Everybody, everybody can, can dolls in our world for a change. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we didn't get too much into video games tonight, but we did dive into you know movies big time and wrestling. We talked about video games. We yeah. About Mario Kart shit. Yeah, I mean a l- little bit, not a whole lot, but you know it's all good. Like I said, this is totally just you know off the cuff, man. We just uh, we're winging it here. Yeah. Um, Don't worry, people. We got more coming. Oh yeah, we'll uh, we'll definitely be back with some more um, podcast videos for sure. Um, you know, sometimes they may be longer, they may be shorter. It just depends on, you know, like I said, what what zone we're in, you know, uh, how we're feeling. It's, you know, but it's all good. So I guess, yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap this one up, guys. Uh, yeah, this was the first episode, or first, or I should say our first podcast, which I think uh, went, went pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I think it think went like I said, if I didn't have to get up and go to work in the morning, we'd be talking for about two or three more hours. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, that's, it's, it's fun talking about the old school stuff, new school stuff, things we like, things we don't like, and everything in between and all all that stuff. But yeah, we'll go ahead and uh, wrap it up here for you guys. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the first podcast here. It was... Uh, something new new series i guess we're starting here on my channel you know every every year i seem to be starting like a couple new things you know it's like before you know it i'm gonna have like a hundred you know like five years from now if i'm still doing youtube i'm gonna have like you know uh, a hundred different series going or something because i i never like run out of ideas for some reason i'm always thinking of stuff and i'm always writing stuff down and I'm like, um, yeah, let's go with this, let's go with that. I've got a lot of things written down that I haven't even tapped into yet, you know, which is cool. Which I, you know, and each year, will what I'll do is probably, you know, add a new f- couple things. Like this year, I added the What If series, uh, now the podcast, and I got a, a new retro gaming series that's coming out soon as well. And uh, I got some ideas that I want to do for 2021 as well. <laughs> so I got a lot going on. It's crazy. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, I just got, I, I got too much energy. Um, I guess, I don't know. Um, I feel like a teenager. So I guess we're going to keep rocking and rolling. But yeah, guys, we'll go ahead and call it there. Um, that was the, uh, our first podcast. And uh, yeah, we'll be back again. I don't know when, but you know, from time to time, we'll pop up, and uh, we'll shoot yes, the shit. Yeah, we'll shoot the shit again, man, for sure. <laughs> Until next time, people. Until next time, we out of here, and y'all have a kick-ass night. And I hope you guys enjoyed this motherfucker. If you don't, fuck you. <laughs> if you don't, no, <laughs> don't say fuck you, but. <laughs> it's all good. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you do like it, you do it to each of his own. <laughs> it's all good, man. We ain't hating. I know. I'm, we, I'm just bullshit. 
yeah, we don't we don't hate up in here, man. Every I'm, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, which yeah, is exactly. uh, which is cool with me. You know, I'm, I'm gonna roll with it until I until I don't. <laughs> Oh yeah, but yeah, this was a pretty good man. We got into some deep stuff, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed this one. Hell yeah! So, anyways, guys, we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. That was uh, that was our first podcast. I'm out of here. Or, or yeah, we're we're out of here, and have a good one, people. Later. Bye. Peace.